Before I get to explaining my guide, I just want to let you know that there is a little bit of math involved and the first slide may be a little overwhelming. Just hold on and it'll all make sense in a minute. While this may look a bit confusing, it's actually pretty simple. This chart simply takes all the statistics in the game, separates them by their ranges of values, and then assigns a point system to each one. This can be split into three categories, mobility slash other, recoil, and damage. Added together, this gives a build its final classification rating. Someone who knows about the numbers in the game may be able to look at this chart and easily classify their own builds, but I know that most people aren't like that, so I'll be breaking this down and showing you how you can easily do this on your own. Before I do that, I want to make sure that you guys understand that this is not a ranking or a tier list. My first guide last year, which took a while to complete, was actually a ranking of weapons based on their intended role, or within their intended role, and points were assigned based on their placement. The problem with this was that after every buff, nerf, or just overall stat change, it would make my list obsolete and I would have to redo the entire thing, which took a very long time to do. The new system, which I finished in January, is meant to survive through time. The only way that it will ever become obsolete is if there's an absolute overhaul of every single weapon in Warzone. The new system doesn't care if another weapon gets a buff or a nerf. The weapon that you were looking at before will maintain its value unless it was also affected by a buff or a nerf. Because every weapon and build will have a final number associated with it, it is very possible to compare those numbers with other numbers and create a ranking list, but it was not my intention for this to be done this way. I'll explain this a little bit later, but for now, let's get to learning how to use this thing. So you start by getting the template, or making one yourself, and uh, once that you look at it, it's a little easier than the chart before, where it separates the mobility, damage, and recoil into three easy areas. I understand that my guide requires a lot of information to be filled in, so whenever you use any information, whether you get it yourself or from someone else, make sure that it's accurate. Make two builds, compare them. If they seem right compared to each other based on the descriptions, it's probably accurate. If it's not, then you may need another source. The reason accuracy is so important in Warzone is because distances are usually greater than they are in multiplayer. Having inaccurate numbers is basically the same as being inaccurate with your gun. If you're aiming at the chest and you are 10 degrees off, then at 5 meters you're 0.83 meters off, which is sometimes okay. But at 25 meters, you're 3.33 meters off, and that is not good. You want to put all the stats on your weapon for mobility slash other, with the attachments, not without it. Then you want to list your attachments and put their pros and cons. It doesn't matter if they have a numeric value or not, just make sure that they're there. And then you can compare it to the blank gun and make sure that your attachments are actually doing what they're supposed to do. You don't actually have to do this though. If you know your information is good, then just slot it in, write down your attachments, and move on to the next step. The next step is extremely easy. All you gotta do is compare the stats to the mobility chart and color code it based on the ranges. So for ADS, we see that the M4 gets 283.33 milliseconds. And in the ADS chart, we see that it falls under the less than or equal to 299.99. So we give it an orange color. After color coding all 10 slots, you then assign them their number values and you add it up. So for example, orange is three points. In the end, the M4 gets a total mobility value of 31, and comparing it to the right, we see that that falls under the 26 to 33.9 category, so it also gets orange. Recoil is the hardest statistic to properly give a number to, and in my case, I looked at the amount that you have to move your mouse in order to correct it, and um, basically, a stacked M13 was a top score, and I just went down from that. The lower ends of the recoil chart are basically showing you that it's recoil you can't control, no matter how hard you try. And uh, I've made my best to do a small diagram to show you guys how you can judge your own recoil. Once you have a number, just plug it in and color code it. 
In my second video, I have an expanded recoil chart, so if you want to take a look at that and use that to base your own numbers, then feel free to do so. The next part is the damage section, the most important part of each build. And for this, we put the damage values and shots to kill for each damage range. Don't worry about the time to kill yet, but as you can see, the head on the lowest damage range is 42 damage and 6 shots to kill. Next, you input your TTK with bullet velocity because you are not going to get a 200 millisecond time to kill at 800 meters when your bullet velocity is also 200 meters per second. After that, you color code your TTK just like last time, you add it up, and then you multiply it by its multiplier. For all weapons except SMGs, it's 2.5, and for SMGs, it's 1.66. So, here we got 29 times 2.5, and that is 72.5. That falls under the 68 to 81.9 category, so it gets yellow. At this point, you can add the three numbers up to get the final value. It adds up to 139.5, which falls under 132 to 165, making yellow and being in category 2 build. I understand that you probably wanted to see a lot more green in a more of a meta build, but I wanted to design this in a way that it could always have a way forward and a way under, I guess, too. So here we have an example of the pre-patch FFAR from January. It was OP. It still kind of is, but you can see the numbers and you can see the total value and you can understand why it was so good compared to an M4, which was already very good. A problem that you can see with this guide already is that it focuses on more balanced builds. So when we take these three builds over here, they're more specialized and they get a much lower score. They're still very good guns, but they're not something you probably would run as a primary. And this is where things start to split up a bit based on the gun classifications. A class one weapon is pretty much good in every aspect. Nothing really sucks about it and there's no reason not to use it. This is why we see such little class 1 weapons. The FFAR is still considered class 1 weapons despite the nerf that I got earlier. However, if it gets another nerf, it can be seen probably to be going down to class 2. Class 2 is usually for a good all-around weapon, or it means that it has really high damage rating or a really high mobility rating, but most good weapons will be in this category. But just because it's in this category, like the AS Val, don't expect it to be good at everything. You wouldn't use the AS Val past 30 meters. You also wouldn't try to challenge a team on your own with it. Basically, it's really good at something, but it's not great at everything. But it's good enough that it gets it to be a class 2 weapon, because it will be almost everything else that it would normally be comparing itself to. Class 3 weapons and builds aren't bad weapons, but they have some sort of flaw that you have to make up for. When you use an M13 or a Growl, they perform pretty good at long range, but you usually have to pair them with an SMG to make up for their slower time to kill up close. Specialization though is what makes a class 3 weapon good though. If a class 3 weapon can't outperform a class 2 in some sort of way, then it is just a bad all around weapon, and that is not what you want to do. Class 4 is pretty special. It's either a really bad weapon, or it's an extremely specialized one. Sniper rifles, shotguns, and, I guess, pistols would fit in this category. A Car 98 is really good, but if you try to run only a Car 98, you're not going to have a great time, so that's why it's a class 4. I haven't tested anything that got in class 5 yet, so um, if you find one, please let me know, but it should not be possible to make anything that sucks at absolutely everything. So what does my guide say about meta builds? Well, it pretty much says why they're good. It can show you with numbers exactly why so many people can use them and why they're so effective. This also says though that your M4 never stopped being good. It was no longer the best, but it's still good. The only exception to this rule, I guess, would be if a weapon is so overpowered or just way too good at its role that it makes everything else in that role useless. This is, of course, the FFAR and the SMGs. An assault rifle is currently the best SMG in the game. 
And because it's an assault rifle and its recoil is actually pretty manageable, you can easily stretch its range way further than an SMG. So right now, yes, you technically would be hurting yourself by running an SMG that's not an FFAR. Basically, after the FFAR gets nerfed, there's nothing stopping you from going back to your favorite SMGs and assault rifles. So, that brings me to the next point. Why do we forget these things? Basically, skill-based matchmaking. With everyone being matched with likely skilled players, everyone's skill is continuously going up. And in order to beat people with similar skills, you have to find every advantage you can over them. And in order to beat them, you have to either play smarter or you can just use something that will kill them faster. So this is why we don't go back to these things. We're always looking for the next best thing because that's what we need. Of course, after some buffs and nerfs, some weapons do become pretty much unusable. And after some buffs and nerfs, we kind of do forget about other weapons. But we shouldn't. And what I hope I can accomplish with this system is to show people that you don't need those 20 milliseconds of faster TTK in order to beat someone. You can play to your weapon's advantages. And maybe this way we can introduce, or reintroduce, some different builds that we haven't seen in a while or we've never seen before. So instead of waiting for the next, next best weapon, just go have fun. So that's the end of part one. If you want to learn more about how my system works, or if you want to use it yourself, part two will explain a lot more things, uh, especially things like stability and recoil. Um, if you want to understand even more things about how it works and why I chose certain things, or why I didn't include some certain things, or why some things are so important, that is the place to look, and the video is up now. But if you enjoyed this video, or if it has helped you in any way, please leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, maybe check out the other video first, but if not, just leave them in the comment section down below. And if you never want to miss another video, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.